This is a demonstration of the enhanced Smart Draft profile tools in Smart Draft 16. In this drawing, we have two existing alignments, Pomerado Road and this cross street of Wilsey Way. In Pomerado Road, that it has an existing ground profile, an existing a pro a proposed finish grade center line, a finish grade left, which is the top of curb, and the finish grade right, which is also the top of curb. And we will demonstrate the enhanced labeling tools, which will allow us to do a three line profile on a single profile view in Civil 3D. First of all, let's turn off the existing profile of the ground and the center line. This also has this green line, which represents a pipe network of water, these cyan lines, which represent a pipe network of sewer, and these magenta lines, which represent a pipe network of storm drain. Starting off, let's pick the Label Profile Station and Elevation Command. One of the first things you'll notice is you can pick and find your profile views and specify the profile that you want to label. What can you label? The actual profile line. And if you don't want to draw the line and just let Civil 3D draw the line, do you want these labels to be dynamic, meaning they'll update as the design updates? If you want them just to be static and they don't change and you have to redo them, erase and redo, you can uncheck that. Do you want to actually add labels? Let's say you only want to draw the profile line. You can unselect labeling of slopes and labeling of the labels, and you would just draw the profile. When you have the profile, you can specify any profile geometry station text, as in gray breaks, the beginning and end of vertical curves. Do you want to label high points and low points, and what are those station special texts called? Do you want them to be prefixes or suffix, and do you want to have a space between these values and the station? It also works if you want to add horizontal geometry along the alignment, as in station equations, beginning and ending of the alignment, tangent to tangent, beginning of curves, curve to tangent or end of curves, compound curves, reverse curves, and various spiral to tangent setups. Again, do you want it to have a prefix suffix and do you want the space between these particular special text and the station value? In the label, you can have a little offset or you can have an actual circular node. Do you want the label to go up, down, or prompted, meaning at some specific angle, like 45 degrees. Do you want the station or the elevation on top of the leader? Do you want to actually include the station value? Do you want to have a prefix like STA, and then if there's a space, you'd add it? Or do you like to have that at the end as a suffix? What is the station precision, elevation? Is this going to be a top of curb, prefix, suffix like that? What is the precision of the elevation going to be? And if you're in very high elevations and the space is at a premium, you may want to remove or truncate the first few characters. If there are vertical curves in your design, do you want to be prompted for each vertical curve and in this particular case, prompted for the interval label for each vertical curve. So if you have a consistent interval label inside the vertical curve that you want, like 50, then you would say you don't want a prompt for each one. You would just come over here to vertical curve options and say label every 50 feet inside the vertical curve. If you wanted to have no labels, you could just say label at zero and it would not put labels inside. If you want those interval labels to have a gray break circle, check that box. And then now when it comes to the dimension above the vertical curve, here's your length value and what kind of suffix or prefix you want to have on it. Here's your PBI station and then what kind of prefix you want to have on that. Your, your PBI elevation, what kind of prefix you want to have on that. And you have up to three locations above and below the dimension line to place those values. Do you want to specify the K value? What's its prefix? Again, what are these various precisions? And when it comes to elevations, do you want to truncate that elevation? Do you want to include your in and out 
grades when it comes to your vertical curve and then what prefixes those are and where they are placed. When it comes to labeling your high point or low point, you want that high point or low point label to have a grade break circle. And when it comes to the beginning and the end of the vertical curve, do you want those to have grade break circles and any other special notes that you may need to designate on your vertical curves that you do for drafting purposes. Next is, do you like to have just interval labels along the profile every 50 feet, every 25 feet, every 100 feet? You specify the interval. There's only those three choices. Do you want to add them? And if you don't, you just deselect that. Do you want those interval labels to be placed inside the vertical curves? And if you did that, you would place, you would set this value to zero. Do you want horizontal geometry to be labeled in the profile? And you want grade break circles for those. Do you want your, your beginning of curves, end of curves, any PIs to be labeled from the plan view in the profile? And now if you want to label slope, check slope, specify any prefixes or suffix, what that slope precision is. Do you want it to be a percentage or a decimal? Do you want to include a directional arrow? Do you want the slope values to be absolute values or do you want them to include a negative sign if their slope's in a decreasing value? And do you want them above or below the actual profile line? Once you've specified all your values, you would just run the command. It gives you a chance to only label a portion of it if you want to, or you can label the whole thing starting with the lowest station of the profile that you have profile information for, and then going to your highest value. It finds those values, calculates them, and then labels them per the settings that you set in that dialog box. One thing to note is that it is these are dynamic labels. This profile view got shifted over into my design. You can actually pick it up and move it. And you'll notice that all those labels that were just placed move with the profile just as if they were native Civil 3D labels. These are smart draft dynamic labels. So things like moving this profile label, you can see that it extends the dimension lines because it knows that this is a vertical curve label. If I try to move it off the vertical curve, it jumps right back to the vertical curve. So that way, if any vertical curve is extended, or shortened, those labels will move appropriately. Same with things like these high points, you can't move it off the high point. But any interval labels, you could have come in here and change the station that it's at by just entering it, or you can grab it and move it, and then it will move to the appropriate location and change the elevation value to what that elevation is at that specific point, that specific station. If you ever need to get a label back to its home position. You can use the right click functionality in SmartDraft if it hasn't been turned off. Sometimes by clicking it the first time it doesn't show up but you can just click again now you can see reset the label back to home position. All of this has taken place. We do have some ability to clean up labels. You have situations like this where they're all bunched in together. So I can select one. Say I want to clean. Select the ones that I want to clean. Select near the one I want to stay in its home position and you can see the other labels move away run the same exact command again which the shortcut is PVC for profile clean and you can come down and look and see if you need to clean any more if you don't want to remember that shortcut you can always just pick the right click and find and here's what's interesting is you can actually pick on either side and you can see this is you want this to be the master you can see how everything else this didn't need to move because there's no interference this didn't need to move and then that one moved in this particular case you see a, a beginning of the profile labeled, and if you didn't want that, you can actually say sup suppress the special station text, and now it takes it away. It did place a label at every single 50 feet, maybe in this little portion here, which is showing the crossfall at the end of the cul-de-sac. These are independent labels. You can just delete them on these slope labels, unlike the Civil 3D ones, you can move them. They do stay attached to the label, but you can see I can move it along the actual profile line and it doesn't create an arrow pointing back to the center of the profile line, so I can move them into a nicer location for drafting purposes. Here, if I really wanted to, I can say put it below or just actually use the command change label direction and go to the opposite side or right click on it and say change label direction and have it go below 
Same with any of these labels. If, want, if they got too busy and you wanted to just have one go below, right click on it and say change label direction, flips it to the bottom. Now, or you can flip it right back, either using that right click functionality or CLD, change label direction. Another part of this tool is with these dynamic labels is being able to come in here and be able to do some structure rim labels. So you can actually just grab these various structures, put those rim labels on. And we've done another video that shows all the details of these structure and rib ribbon labels. So you can find that on our YouTube channel as well. But now you see we, get, we may have a little bit more interference going on and we can use the PVC command or profile clean, move some of these labels away from others. Deflection angles is a new command where you pick two pipes and we actually show a station, an IE elevation. It doesn't necessarily have to be IE. You would specify when you go into the command, the options, and what do you want to label? Do you want the label to go up, down, your various settings? What elevation from the pipe do you want to draw from? Do you want to include the station value? What your prefix is or suffix is for the actual deflection angle? and your precision of the actual angle. And then these particular labels do update as the design changes and they can be moved around. And if your drafting standards says no leader coming off there, just move that up and it will be just an angle coming off of that. Again, we have another structure bottom label. There's a whole video on these to show all of the various options. And if we want to do a crossing pipe label, we select that and get a crossing pipe label. And now you have your center line labeled. But now we want to actually put the right and left curb either above, on top of, and or below the center line label. Civil 3D doesn't allow this without creating offset profile view. But we have added some ability to come in here and specify some offset distances and create dynamic labels. As you can see, our profile view does not have offsets sets, so we can see that by the top and bottom being grayed out. We can set a offset of 15 feet or 10 feet in five foot intervals above and below the profile for, for our top and bottom labels. So in this case, let's label 15 feet above and 15 feet below so we can miss all of this storm drain and utilities that are underneath. So once we've set those values, now our top and bottom options appear. So select top. What do we want to place at top? In this particular case, we want to place the left top of curb. We actually want to draw it. And if you want to place it on an actual profile curb lab label, then you would go in using the customization tools and add that to this list. It's a customizable list. It's not set you can just look at the customization of smart draft to, to add what you want we want to create dynamic labels all these other settings are the same make sure that our label is going up for the top and it's asking for a beginning and ending value so again we don't have to label the whole thing but we can if we so choose so it's going in and adding all those labels just as we did previously again we can come in here knowing that the beginning station is not a bc but is actually in our area. We call this a PCR, so it's the point of curve return. But you can put beginning of curve return or whatever. So suppress the special character, meaning beginning of profile, and put in your designation for a, a curve return. Do that again at the end. This is not an end of profile. Take off the special character end of profile and call this the BC for the beginning of the cul-de-sac. Again, cleaning up any overlapping labels is is fairly rapid with the PVC command and now we have a very interesting situation in this vertical curve we have this curb return opening for a street an intersecting street between 47003 and 53897 so if we came up here and looked at that and we added those individual labels we could use that by adding an individual label profile label at station. So let's just add one at the top using the left or 470 
07. It placed that label in their location. And now here's a very interesting thing that you can do with these, lay, these, these profile lines. So the first thing that I want to do is come in here and say, I don't want to draw that full. I want to draw that to 47007. So now I actually have a break right at my PCR. So if we move this out of the way, you would actually see it, that we have profile going to there. So I can double click and say PCR. So that's a PCR location. To make this look a little better, move this to the actual center of that. I can use O snaps to do so. Next is this vertical curve is really a partial vertical curve. We want that to be set at 5 plus 3897. So and we want to change this to portion of vertical curve. And instead of keeping the whole thing, we want to change this vertical curve label over to 538. 97. Still shows the full PVC and PVC elevation, but you can see that it moved the label over. And these other labels that are in the middle of the intersection, you can get rid of. Now you can come and add PCR um, suffix. Well, now you want to actually draw this profile. You can either use the label profile profile line to draw it from that station to the end by just picking the two stations, or you can right click on this and say make a copy. If I say full and then come back, 538.97 to the end of the profile. Now you have a profile line that goes all the way to the end. What's also nice about these dynamic profiles, if I was to run this command again, it won't place labels at the same location that they're already at. Now let's do the bottom. We want to do the profile station elevation command, bottom, the right, now we want the labels to go down instead of up so that they don't interfere with those utilities that are in place. And we can say label from the beginning to the end. You can see maybe I should have specified 20 feet instead of 15. So that's easily fixed. Select the profile view, right click, and you'll see this edit profile offsets. Change that to 20 and it will actually shift that down another five feet and you don't have to redo the labeling. Again, it's dynamic. It knows what it's associated to. If design is changed by the engineer, those these labels will update. This profile vertical curve label, just move it down to where you want it to be. Again, doing all the cleanup with vertical curves, if you wanted to put them above you just drag the vertical curve dimension label above or below and it will allow you to do that. The last label that we would like to demonstrate is the label station intersection, which will allow you to put a label for this intersection of where wheel Z crosses Palmerado, both at this station and this station. Alignment intersection. So it says here, select a profile in profile view what crossing alignments and if however many are in the project would actually list here we only have the one because i had it going down i can say i want that now to go up by using this command and just say uh, change label direction i move it back up our cld we can see that we have some interference with the proof with the vertical curve dimension move that out of the way pvc to clean up here and let that intersection label and PVC to clean up this. The last thing that I'd like to show you is that these are really tied to this profile view. If you move the profile view, all the labels get recalculated and placed in the right locations based on the profile information. The other thing that it will know is if you change profile scale from say 10 to 1 to 5 to 1, it will do the same type of things where everything gets scaled down. The vertical curve callouts you're going to have to modify because they're going to stay in the exact same elevation location, but you'll have to figure out how to make them all all work. But you can see that it, it's it's intelligent in that that respect. Let's change it back to 10 to 1. That's the end of the demonstration for the profile view labeling command. Thank you.